Let's let's finish this puppy up. Sometimes it's hard to get back where you were. And then you can see all the things that are not quite right with it. But I still like it. I think the red needs to be a little oranger. So I might do a little glaze on the red first. With some orange. I didn't spray my palette, so it's all dry. Like a cadmium orange. Since the, um, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, because watercolors are transparent. It's fairly simple to just put a thin, thin layer on top of the paint to, to alter the value of the hue. You have to be careful though, I will pick up the paint underneath if you put on too much. But sometimes that's a good thing, especially if you're trying to feather out the edges. It allows you to blend a little more. So it's gone too orange. It's got some interesting little sh little bits of yellow, just kind of like highlights on the edges of the feathers. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull that one off. Why is it getting dark? Weird. I have no idea what that noise is. Some large truck just pulled up outside. Hmm. I wish I had painted this just a little bigger.
I'm nervous. I'm afraid I'm going to screw it up. <laughs> oh, well. Let's see. Nobody likes to screw up. And this brush is sadly disintegrating. It's getting all splayed out. So I'm going to use my Kuretake. Wherever I put it. To do that really black. It's watercolor too, so it works quite nicely. If I can find it. Oh crap. What did I do with it? Oh, here it is. I got it. Alright, so some of these are really black. It's, I feel, feel like I'll have a little more control because I won't have to be re dipping the brush. Breathe. Don't forget to breathe. Remember to breathe. I always forget. I really should do that later. Okay. So I'm going to put in a little bit of the outside here background and I don't really like that reddish background I'd rather make it a different color but I need to put down something subtle I'm thinking green could you do a background um, that's not watercolor like um, because it would run um, no Combined, right? I do, but I'm going to do this one in watercolor. Um, it won't run because I'm going to be careful. I want to delineate, especially on the places. It's mostly dry because it's been sitting for a couple of days. Just the place on the head that I worked on. So I'm going to try to make it a green that isn't the same color as a green on the parrot. Now, I didn't leave enough space in between the head and the bird wing here, so I can see my drawings off a little bit, but I don't think anyone's going to flunk me for that. But I do want to keep a crisp, a crisp edge on the feathers. And I I don't know where my masking fluid is, or I'd use it. You can actually paint something and then mask it and paint over it, almost like batik. Have you ever done batik with wax? You put on a, some wax on the cloth, and then you color, you put dye on it, 
and then you put more wax on it. It's sort of like tie-dye in a way. Um, I really wanted to get the edge of this beak. I think backgrounds are a lot of fun because you can do more fun things with it, like streak it, and I'll streak it with some and then let's use some of this here, it's not very natural. So this is where you get to play with wet. Oh, I did get the beak. Look at that. Ah, I did run the beak. Okay, I can clean that up. So just fun to do the really loose wet into wet. So I'm going to get this all wet. And it's on a, it's on a pad. It's not on a block, so it's going to wrinkle up. Now the trick is going to be re to remember how I did it so I can do it on the other side. <laughs> That's cool. I like that. Leave that alone. All right. No problem. Talk to you later. That background looks really cool. I just didn't think it was possible to put the background in second. Well, I wanted to keep a, a, the white. You can see on the on the reference, there's a the white edge that's defined by the background. And so it worked out for me in this case. Um, oil painting would be different. I would probably do more weird stuff with the edge. And there seems to be little shots of yellow, just like 
overglaze of yellow on some of these little feathers here on the red, which is kind of cool looking. And of course on the green. All right. Okay, I'm going to finish up the rest of the blue feathers. If I can remember what color I was using. So it helps some to put your colors in the same basic place every time you paint so that you can uh, more easily find the colors that you're looking for. It's more like playing a piano. So when I set up my oil painting palette, I definitely have a certain ritual that I do to put the colors where I want them to be.
Wow, that is gorgeous. Oh, God, you scared the crap out of me. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> I was just trying to figure out how I lost a feather on the tail. <laughs> that scared me. That was funny. So I need another feather right here. It's sort of interesting. I mean, trying to gauge the the dark and the light where the shadows are and then the blue is dried so I can't tell which one is the ultramarine and which one is the cobalt when it's dry it's harder To me, watercolor gets a little impressionistic. Not so much accurate, but just kind of... Because <sighs> you can't really... Well, you can work at a super, super controlled, but I think it's more interesting when it's a little looser. I don't think my daughter is going to be getting her driver's license until next summer. She needs so many hours on the road and I just don't really go anywhere.
See, I don't know if I do watercolors correctly, although I don't know is there a correct anything when it comes to art. I mean, there's traditional ways of doing it, but I also, I tend to, since I'm an oil painter, I tend to treat it a little more like I would oil painting and just doing the layers and glazing, which I guess is a technique, but I'm not, I've never been formally trained in watercolor, only in oil painting. I suppose I should take a couple workshops. Couldn't hurt. It's good to take workshops in different media from different professionals. They're good with it. Nice thing about workshops is that you don't have to worry about grades or any of that stuff. You're just learning how to do something. And it's completely for the joy of learning it and not for anything else. So I encourage you to take community workshops whenever you can. And hands-on workshops are really you know, good to get, it's good to get away from the computer and actually uh, interact with people in a real setting, you know. Yeah. I see what you're talking about the layering now. Yeah, so I go back over it and it just gives it more vibrance, I think. I think, anyway. You get to a point where you can st almost stop looking at the reference and just go with what you think looks really cool. And for you, Guthrie, slowing down, taking your time, not rushing it, not, not speed painting, but being more meticulous. And that's not really your style, but it's always good to push your own style in different ways to see what happens. See what happens if you do something that's very meticulous. I used to be meticulous. And you got impatient? I think I... Life got so busy I quit drawing. Oh and stuff and then I started just doing you know faux stuff mm -hmm. murals and I guess yeah so I forget I forgot how to draw for enjoyment um, um, and to produce artwork I'm trying to gain that back yeah that's really hard when you get into making a living with your art is where do you separate you know, your personal fun projects from the money, your bread and butter money. That, that can be very challenging. Okay, I really do want to finish this today, so keep on plugging away. If you guys get bored and want to leave, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, I'm just going to keep on doing this and it's still recording so when the recording's done I'll post it so I need to make this part of the wing darker all the way across that's not the right color blue Are you going on vacation to Arizona? Mm, September 7th to the 11th. Mm. 
and we're going to rent a car and drive to Los Angeles. Take my mom to see her cousin. She hasn't seen her in a long time. We were really close. And uh, my brother might show up, one of my brothers, and my son might show up. It's just, it's going to start getting really busy for my son. He won't be able to travel so much because um, the fall and holiday season, he does a lot of performing in churches and things like that for holidays and things. So he makes a, a big chunk of his yearly income on that. Bye, John. And I would like to get my bass guitar back from my brother. That's on my agenda. He's had it for like 20 years now. I think it's time I took it back. He's not been very cooperative. I wonder if he sold it. <laughs> if he is, I'm going to kill him. Did you play bass? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I used to play bass in a three-piece band. That was fun. And I'd like to just, I'd like to just fool around, you know, noodle around with it again, even if I don't do anything significant with it. So I suspect the next few projects we're going to be doing are going to be portrait-based because I wanted to do a series of portraits of my sister's kids. So I've got some models, some photographs, and so if you're interested in that, that'll be good. I'm interested. I'm trying to do a portrait of my of my niece and her um, husband. Hmm. They were married a little over a year ago. Do you have some decent references to work with? With a little bit. I sent you some, and you said they weren't high resolution enough. Oh yeah, you gotta get you gotta get good ref if you can't get the person in life definitely got to get the good rough I am going to repaint some of my tarot cards revamp them that's going to be an interesting experiment kind of bummed at this one off the page but oh well Well, it, it makes it larger than life, and where you have it captured, where it goes off the page, mm -hmm. is where those feathers, um, what do you call those feathers, the ones that stick out like this? I'm not sure. Pinion feathers? Yeah. So, yeah, it leaves more to the imagination because it's off the page, I think. Hmm. That's very kind of you. <laughs> I know you're trying to make me feel better. I think it's cool that those pinion feathers are off the page. It looks cool. Okay. I'll take that. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time understanding the pattern, though. It's, it's bluish purple on this side. This side kind of bluish purple. And it curves this way. And then this other one comes in and it, oh, I can't do it, curves this way.
And there's some really dark blue there. Oof. Got lost again. The um, total eclipse of the sun or not? I mean, you're far up north. How does that happen over there? Um, well, it won't be a total. It'll be a partial. Ah. But my brother and my dad are going down to um, Texas to see the total eclipse. Hmm. I guess it's something that, if you can, you should do once in your lifetime. <clears throat> oh, my back. <laughs>
<laughs> the three hardcore ones are left. Oh, thank you. I don't get to do this as much as I should. I'd like to do this all day. If I just had a stream going where I would just make art all day long and anyone can just tune in and watch me. That would be weird, huh? You have to keep those streams alive because that's what um everything that you do I'm Do you, did I explain that? I, yeah, I, I really, really I really got to get it the, the patron thing going and do like regular like every day doing like a painting a day or something you know one of those things where I know there was a guy who was doing painting a day and auctioning it off at the end of the day just doing little still lives little studies of things and I should be able to do something like that Oh, and I should be able to draw every day, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was able to start flossing my teeth every day. It is time-consuming, but it's part of the beauty of it, I guess. Time-consuming and timeless. Kind of interesting. I'll do a little bit more on his back and then I'll do the rest of the background. Draw, floss, and exercise. Mm hmm. I'll exercise tonight. I'll go to yoga. I drew and I painted and I floss every morning and every evening. This is definitely something I could do, that Twitch stream thing that, that uh, Dave's always talking about. This is not naked people. <laughs> could be like a canvas cams, like they have kitten cams. Maybe you can tune in and watch kittens live. That's what I should do. That would be funny. Kitten cams. Canvas cam. I bet there's somebody already doing it. Not exactly a novel idea. captured some live moments of my cats. Hmm. Our kittens was so much fun. We had a little kitten house and we played with them in the videos. All right. Mm. Could do a little more texture on the back here. Little dry brush.
Somebody was asking me about adding ink to something that they were working on and then being upset because it looked like a cartoon. You know, because it had outlines. Mm. But that wasn't one of you guys. When I did my period, I didn't have spell and outlined it in ink. Actually, it was one time. You told me not to outline it like that. Yeah, don't don't outline it because the, the outlines will flatten it. You want to give it dimension. Let the surrounding parts dictate some of the edges. But there's certainly a place and a time to do those little bits of like the black around his face. And some of these really dark areas where the feathers overlap, I'm, I want to go in with a little bit of ink and just hit it up a little, just a little darker. So you actually use the color to define the edges, really, more than an outline. Oh well, yeah, just using dark behind the dark, you know, a dark behind the lighter areas to define the area of the feather next to it, you know, instead of a line, it's an edge. At least that's my, what I'm attempting to do. screwed that part up, but no one's going to know but you and me in the gatepost. So I've muddied this up so bad, I don't know if I can pull that bright color back out.
Who's Carrie? Is that your roommate? Where did she used to leave? No, she's still here. Scary? Scary. Carrie. 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 Teresa said, said her friend Carrie. And I was just wondering who Carrie was. She was like your roommate. Oh, my neighbor saw my neighbor saw the bird. I just brought him in here to show it. Oh, the really? Bird. Yeah. And he said, that's, that's amazing. Oh. Yeah, I, I don't know. He said it was scary. It was scary. So scary. No, it's not scary. It's fun. So good it was scary. Scary good. Mm. I don't want anybody to be scared. All right. Let's get the back of this. Ooh, I like the way that turned out there. That's cool. Let's get the other side of this guy. And for me, it'll be easier if I turn it upside down.
I like that, the way it runs. Cool. All right, and there's a little dot right here. Yeah, I'm happy with it. Yeah. When it dries, I'll just probably go in with a little bit more dark and just pump up the darks just a little bit more, more contrast, more drama. I'd like to do the little things around the eyes too. Do that with a small watercolor brush and a gray, just a light gray. Yeah, I think that'll do. <laughs> All right. There we go. All right, kids. Oh, it's a quarter after four. I think I should have some lunch. Would you send me a copy that I could print out so I could send it to my aunt because she likes birds? I'm going to send her the one I did and, the, and a copy of one you did.